Opinions expressed on ACB Radio are those of the respective program contributors and cannot be assumed to serve as endorsements of products or views of the American Council of the Blind, its elected officials, or its staff. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Cooking Without Looking TV show, St. Lucia edition. I'm Alan Preston. Yes, hi, and I'm Annette Watkins. And Alan, um, not only are we going to meet our friends in St. Lucia, we're doing something very special today. Um, we're with our friends at the American Council of the Blind, and we appreciate the invitation to be part of your community events. Thank you so much. After each of our segments, we'll give you a chance to ask some questions and give your comments. And just a reminder, all of us on the show, Alan and, and all our guests and I, are all um, visually impaired or blind. And you know, our motto is, we wanna change the way you see blindness. I think that's so clever, but it's true. Now, let's meet our first friends in St. Lucius. First, here's just a little bit about the Caribbean island country. St. Lucius is an Eastern Caribbean island nation with a pair of dramatically tapered mountains, the Petons, uh, on its east, uh, excuse me, was that its west coast? I think it's its west coast. West yes. coast. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. That's a tongue twister, not really, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, Alan, its, its coast is home to volcanic beaches and reef diving sites, luxury resorts, and fishing villages. The trails in the interior rainforest lead to waterfalls like the 15 meter high Torrell, which pours over the cliff into a garden. That sounds beautiful. The capital, uh, Sustries, did I pronounce it? Is it Custries or Sustries? Custries. Custries is a popular cruise port. And I would imagine now at spring break, you're pretty, pretty busy there. Indeed. <laughs> Our first guest from the, uh, from the St. Lucia's Blind Welfare Association is Julia Menel. Uh, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, my name is Julia Menel, a former teacher of the Montessori Center. I, I, I mean, as an early child educator, lost my sight about um, 2007. And this has been home, just in, enjoying life. Well, Julia, I'm glad you do enjoy life. That's what it's all about. So, Julia, uh, you're preparing a traditional breadfruit and salt fish with a secret <laughs> ingredient. Can't wait to find out what it is. Okay, I decided to pre prepare a breadfruit. It's a local dish. Um, are, we all are we all ready to go? Yes, all ready to go. You ready? I'm just going to all right, so idea. let's learn to cook the St. Lucia's way. Julia? Okay, so I can start? Yes. Okay. Okay, I have some, as you know, I have some dishes right here, some small bowls. In a hair, the first one I have my onions. I have my peppers, bell peppers. I have what you call, I um, mean, my salt fish, also what we call smoked herring, and my mixed veg. And this one I, what I'm going to do, like so. First of all, I'm going to use, use the frying pan. I'm going to saute it first before I actually mix it. In here is the breadfruit. It's all diced up, it's up very nicely. Or I use it, I have to mix it. So first of all, I'm going to be putting the putting my onions. It's about five spoons of onion, six spoons of onion. So I'm going to put, put it in the in the frying pan right here. On. In the, so I'm going to put it all in the middle. Uh, Renee, I think we just lost Julia's picture. Oh, you lost my picture? I think so. Well, Julie, continue, continue to. Uh, Are you able continue to tell me? us what's going on there? I'm not sure, Are you but. Able I, to see me? 
There are you there? are again. <laughs> all right. Are you yes, yes. Okay. First of all, I'm going to put for in the onions. I'm going to break in the frying pan. Let me try to break in the frying pan. Okay, the next one is my bell pepper. No, no. Right here. You've uh, pre-cut and pre-measured all these beforehand, is that correct? Yes, I did. Five spoons of, six spoons of onions, six spoons of bell peppers. Make sure that I... Okay. In here is my smoked herring. And it's five spoons of smoked herring. It's all shredded. No, 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 no. Okay, smoked herring. Okay. Shredded. I'm sorry, uh, did you tell us how much of uh, the smoked herring you add to that? Five spoons of smoked herring. After that, I'm going to be putting the salt okay. thing. I'm going to be putting the salt thing in. Okay. Oh, no. where, where do you get the salt? What I'm going to do, I'm going to be stirring it right now. This okay. is just, I'm just going to saute it. Uh, okay. Uh, Julia, where do you get, your, get the salt fish? Where do I, where do we where get, do it? get it? Where do you obtain it? Do you buy it or do you go out and, uh, do you, are you, do you, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm curious. Yes. Do, do you but, go out and buy it? Is it available in the stores there? Yes, at the supermarkets. Okay. You can get them in exactly the what is salt fish. What's that? Well, exactly what is salt fish? What do you know what variety it is? Um it's, I don't really know the variety. All I know it is called it's a salt fish and it's something that's salt fish, okay. Is that okay. something well, I'm just wondering if it's you know shark or whale or I don't know. <laughs> Salted cod, codfish. Ah, salted codfish. Thank you. All right, Julia. So you're stirring and stirring. Yes? Okay, I will just wait for about two minutes. Okay, now I'm going to take my mix. The vegetables, it's a whole lot of vegetables. It has string beans, it has carrots all sorts of things, just to give it a little flavor. Okay. And so, what is that you're adding now? All right. Okay. Uh, you can smell that as it starts to cook. How do you know when it's done? Um, just about two minutes. Just about a minute to a, a minute to two minutes, and then it's okay. Then I need to add a little curry. Curry, okay. I need to add some curry to give it a little, a little more flavor. Well, we have a nice close up of the dish. That's wonderful. Now it can be used in a variety of menus because the bread food, we usually use it in different menus. Usually you have it just broiled and sliced and put on a dish. You can also make um, roasted bread fruit, fried bread fruit, bread fruit balls, and you can mix a bread fruit pie using um, cheese, use, uh, using mince. Um, turkey or ground beef, or if you don't want to consume it that way, you just make a smoothie. Where you chop it up, you put it in your blender or your bullet, you add some ice cream and milk, and you get a very nice smoothie. How interesting. Yeah, that... me. <laughs> mm. 
Now, I'm curious, Julia, as you stir that, uh, yeah. it, can you smell it? Uh, is, is that how you determine when it's cooked or do you just do it by the amount of time? Um, it's just about the amount of time. It, 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 takes, it has a very nice flavor, aroma. So right now I'm going to turn it off. I'm going okay. to turn it off. You uh, cook on a gas stove, am I right? Yeah, on a gas stove. I like gas stoves better. I only have an electric, unfortunately. Okay, but it's right. Okay. Now that I have finished, finished, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pour it into this silver container, which has the bread with all dye stuff. Okay. okay. I'm gonna put it on, pour it all in. You have a limited amount of sight, is that right? A little bit of eyesight? No sight. No sight whatsoever? No sight whatsoever. Okay. Well, not that that's okay, but I understand. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to be mixing it. Just okay. mixing it so that it's on. Well, Now, how many people will this serve? Looks like a fairly large amount. Yes, a large amount. Maybe a four, four servings or more. Okay. <laughs> nice for your family of four for dinner. Yes, it is. And what kinds of things do you serve with this? Okay, you can have a, a smaller salad with it. You can maybe with some cucumbers, some lettuce, some tomatoes, some avocados. Because it already has, it's, it's knitting it because I have this, the salt, cod, salt fish, which we call cod fish, and also the smoke herring. Now the smoke herring, I infuse it with the salt fish to give it a stronger flavor. Really sounds delicious. Sure does. Can I ask you something, Julia, about your yes. dish? Is this the kind of dish that you can make, you make all year long, all year round, or is it something you make certain times of the year? Usually um, you can make it on, um, sometimes you make it like on a Sunday or you make it, but usually during the month of October, which is Creole month, we serve a lot of these um, salt fish and breadfruit and smoked herring. Usually the salt fish and the smoked herring, we use it as our, what you call Creole breakfast, where we just, and use the salt fish and the smoke here with some chopped up onions and peppers, along with some what we call Creole bread and what our cocoa stick. We have what we call cocoa stick. It's our one natural cocoa meal right here in St. Lucia. And you have a beautiful um, Creole breakfast in the morning. So as I told you, we can do so many things with the breadfruit. I, did, I choose to do it that way, but I could have made it into a pie using either cheese, ground beef, um, minced turkey. I could have used just cheese, or I could have just stuffed it with salt fish. Also, we make, you can also make the breadfruit um, wraps, where you have to cook wow. the breadfruit wraps. Yeah, there's also breadfruit wraps. And as I say, if you don't want to consume it that way, all you do is make a smoothie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, that's quite a difference. You should write a book that says, you know, like 50 ways to make breadfruit and salt fish, all the different combinations. I'm sure. And the scoop is very tasty. You mm -hmm. just, as I just told you, add your ice cream, you, you slice it up, you put it in your blender, add your ice cream, add your milk. If you are, if you are a bit, um, you don't want your dairy product, maybe you use maybe some avocado and some. Almond milk. Yeah, you sound very yeah. passionate about that dish for sure. Yeah, and it sounds very good. flexible too. Yeah, very flexible. What you got available? Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, and it's, you very good. it's just a pity you can't taste it because it's, it's I've already prepared one. So what I was doing is just showing you how the process in which I I make it. But I already okay. have one already made there. Now after I have done mix it up i would i would put it in my dish and i make a little sauce to go with it which is called a belcher sauce because you want it to come out golden brown 
So, but we, I don't want to put cheese because you know, I mean, it's a local dish, so no cheese. So what I use, I use um, some butter, I use some flour, I use the grated nut milk, which will make it taste like cheese, but it is not cheese, but it comes out very thick and you just spread it on, on top of it. So you can get a very, it comes out very moist, but at the same time, golden brown. So you're going to be seeing it in a little while. So as I say, here I mix, I have already mixed my, my vegetables, my onion, my bell peppers, everything. And you can also have a glass of coconut. You can also have a glass of coconut water with it. It sounds very healthy. You know, it's yes, much yeah. better. It's much and, better than just Cheerios in the morning. And the then I use <laughs> the oil. I use or I use organic olive oil. Oh, nice. I'm not so big. I'm not so okay. big on oil, but I'm not so big on oil. But if I'm going to use oil, is either the um, olive oil or the coconut oil, which is right. right. Yeah. Healthy. And you yeah. use it at the end, you, I yeah. think. You don't cook with it too much. Okay. Yes, and you have, you talk to me, any other questions? Well, uh, the, uh, that looks absolutely delicious. But I'd like to ask our friends in the audience now uh, if they have any comments or questions. Uh, is, uh, let's see, how do we work this? Do we have some questions for Julie from our audience? Okay, so before we get to any questions, I want to quickly remind folks who joined us here in the audience um, just uh, how to, you can participate. If you joined us on a PC, you can raise your hand with Alt-Y and mute and unmute with Alt-A. If you have joined us on the Mac, raise your hand with option Y and to mute and unmute is command shift A. If you joined us from a smartphone app using the Zoom app, to raise your hand you'll locate the more button at the bottom right of your screen, double tap that and you will find your raise hand option there. And to mute and unmute you will find the mute button at the bottom left of your screen. If you join us from a landline phone or a phone with a physical keypad or flip phone, star nine to raise your hand and star six to mute and unmute. And let's see, we have so far we have oh we have Nora. Nora, Hi. you have a question. Hi. Hi. Yeah, good afternoon. Hi. I'm pretty Mitchell, and my question is how, uh, how long does it take to cook? Mm -hmm. I've time wise for uh, how many minutes do you cook it on the stove? Oh, Nora, your, 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 your uh, microphone is not working real well. You're breaking up a little bit. There's kind of hard to understand you. Would you try again, please? Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Um, sure, my microphone. Anyway, um, how how many uh, how long how many uh, minutes does it take to make a big wonderful dish on the on the stove? She's asking how many minutes. What she said was, how long does it take to prepare the dish from start to finish, including chopping or anything, including cooking it as well? How long does it take? No. You? Uh, Is that correct? No, no, that's not it. How long? No, can you hear me okay? Uh, your your, 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 your microphone is breaking up. I'm not answering. Hang on, let me put it on my table here. It's an iPad. Can you hear me now? You're still breaking up, Nora. Yeah, it's my uh, it's my iPad. Can you hear me? Okay. Anyway, yeah. Okay. I'm hearing music. I'm. He uh I'm hearing music. We got it. Go ahead, Nora. Okay. Go ahead. 
Can you hear me now? No, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, uh, yeah. How long does, how many minutes does it take to heat the, the dish up on the stove? <gasps> how many minutes it take to heat on the stove? Yes. About a minute or two. Yeah. Just a couple of minutes. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yes. It's not very hard. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Nora. Thank you. Great to meet you. You're welcome. And I'm glad you're watching. Thank you. Uh, do we have me too. from our audience for me too. Uh, Julia? At the moment, you don't have any raised hands. Well, okay. So, Annette. Yes, dear. It's all yours. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to St. Lucia in my mind. I just I love to be out on the water. And They've got great scuba diving down there. I yeah, love I would imagine. I don't. I don't scuba dive. I'll snorkel, but that's about it. Um, yeah. So we're happy to be here. Happy to be connected to their friends in St. Lucia and Julia. Thank you so much for preparing your dish. I know you put a lot of work and love into that, and uh, we think it's great. And we hope everybody will try it at home. So now we have with us Melvin Felix. Melvin, can you wave to me? I am not. Yes, I'm waiting. On where are you on my screen? Can you wave to me? Yes. Okay, you have the apron on. You look very professional and ready to go. Melvin Felix is also from the Blind um, Association, Welfare Association of St. Lucia. So he is going to make a special dish today. But Melvin, before we get started on your preparing your cheeseburger with lemon, that sounds strange, but I hate. I've heard, I've heard other things sound strange and they taste delicious. So we'll start oh. with that in a moment. First uh -huh. of all, I was reading your bio, a quite interesting story that you have. Um, I'm going to have you tell us a little bit about your version and your feelings and your thoughts about your blindness. I know that you went through a lot going from doctor to doctor and trying to figure out exactly what you had. Yeah. And after about a year, I think you went to, um, totally blind so tell us a little bit about your condition whatever you want to tell us about that and then we'll and about yourself some of the fun things that you do i know you're into some sports and and what have you so go ahead and tell us a little bit about your journey okay so you know it was tough at the beginning see my side was going when i checked the doctor the doctor tell me my eyes is normal mm -hmm. and they could not get anything wrong with my eye and they don't know what's wrong. So I went and do a scan. The scan says it's a brain tumor and, you know, oh it God. was uh, so tough. So they asked me to do an MRI. I had to go to Martinique and do the MRI. And it was so tough. So I could not, my family not have the cash to done everything. But, you know, eventually I always, I used to pray a lot. And I wasn't, I, when my mother, my sister and them, they leave the house, I close up myself in the house and pray a lot. And, you know, mm -hmm. just to, it was so tough for me. Imagine when I start taking a walk, a walk down the step. Remember I told you, 56 steps. Mm. So I use my cane and I get down there, try to get some friend to talk to. Mm -hmm. I get a friend of mine, they call Ted, they give me some advice. Tell me, they tell me my brother, you need to just stay home, man. Mm. Always take a walk in library village. So always do that. Come sit down by the bay in library. Meet some friends, we all wrap up. And a day I tell my mother, to me, I always believe I want to do something. I know I'm blind, I cannot see nothing, but I want to do something, mom. So first we do some, grate some coconut. We stew the coconut with sugar, cinnamon, nutmeg. Mm. And you know, first day I, I go down in the village, with the 
that coconut stuff. So, you know, I imagine I, I go in five and I move around. I sell all five. Oh, good. Yeah. So I tell my mother, mom, you know, we have to do something. <laughs> they can get gold mine there. Yeah, so I say, mom, we got to do something, mom. So I tell mom, to, um, let me try that. Let me try some coconut cake. Mm. Oh, so we, we use some charcoals. We, we use the stove, the oven, but we put it outside and put in the charcoals at the bottom of the stove and we, we bust it up. Oh, oh, I never have enough coconut cake to sell, but I did. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. So in my a day, I come, I said, I start giving my products some, uh, I say, good for the ladies, better for the men. Mm. So a lot of people, yes, coconut cake. It, wait a minute. Why is it better for the men? I missed something. <laughs> wait a you second. Know, you know, people always want something excited. So, you know, I just create, um, think of something you know, people will like, you know? So I say, good for the ladies, better for the men. Mm, got their attention. So no, just to get me up. So people, yeah. Get their attention, yeah. Yeah, so we You're start funny. moving. But these days, but these days, we stop it because of Corona. Right. So because, and my mother get a job, so she not, when she leave Monday, mm -hmm. She going coming back home on Friday, so she's the one that can bake it for me. Okay, well you're you're missing it then Monday through Friday. <laughs> yes, I, I miss a lot, but it's nothing. <laughs> no. Okay, it's well we'll uh, wait for some more of that. You could next time you come on our show, you could maybe make some of that for us. Oh, why not? Yeah. Why put not? Some, uh, we, add, we add some ginger flavor in there. Mm. Oh, make it better. Wow, fresh ginger? Yeah, yeah fresh ginger. ginger, yeah. Okay, yeah. that's great for relieving inflammation, very healthy. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Okay, so today, what are you gonna uh -huh. make for us? Tell us the name of the so, dish and, and then proceed to start preparing it, okay? Okay, the name of my dish is the um, a burger, cheese burger. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we use all uh, uh, minced, the. Uh, um, the mincemeat, we crush it, grounded mincemeat, and then we all the season we have um, the um, seasoned pepper, we have um, the scar, the um, chives, we have um, rosemary, all that we have it in the backyard garden house there, and we add that in there. And oh, it's very tasty. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, so you're starting to make it now. You told us the ingredients. So um, um, the first yeah. thing you're so gonna do. I, I have a burger ready. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to chop all my season and put it there. And to show you how I'm getting done my burger. So you're just using ground beef with that? Yeah, but you know, if I, I want, I can use the lamb, I can use the um, fish, grounded fish, all this stuff. So make different, um, the different, um, you know, the um, flavor. Mm -hmm. So you're saying you could, you know, not just use ground beef, but ground lamb and you just go to the butcher and they'll grind it for you? Pardon me? You go to the butcher and he'll grind the lamb into ground beef, ground meat for you. Yeah, or you can yeah. go in the supermarket. Go in the supermarket and they'll just do it for you. Yeah, just so you're saying you could do different things. You could use fish. You could use lamb and, and burger meat or hamburger yeah. meat. That's great. Okay, yeah. so tell us what you're gonna do first. Let's see here. You got all so, your. We're going to, I'm going to chop my season. So I have the, the, the grounded um, beef is there. Mm -hmm. 
This is the, the, the grinded beef in there. That's ground beef? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to chop my season and put in there and wrap up. Now, where did this recipe come from? Was this handed down from your family or did you, is it your own creation? It is my own creation. Okay. What inspired you? Oh, um, you know, when a day, you know, I try it and, and when I, I say, oh, that flavor is very good. So I use mostly <laughs> a lot of herbs and the season, I add them together and you'll get a very good flavor in there. That's very creative. That's a good yeah. way to do it. You know, cooking is, it's all about, you know, creating something. Yeah, it is. I'm sorry, I was creating looking Creating and enjoying. Yeah. Pardon me? It's all about creating and enjoying. Oh, yes. Why not? You get to enjoy the dinner afterwards. And I find it a lot of fun and very relaxing to go in the kitchen and make something like this. Yeah, it is. <laughs> So I'm going to chop, I go chop, chop my season to put in, in. How do you not cut your fingers off now? Tell us your trick. <laughs> no, no. Did you go uh, to I, school? To, I used to, I used to work, I used to work in a restaurant before. Oh, before you came blind. Okay. So yes. you're in your late twenties, in your twenties. Yeah, in my 20s, around 27 to 28 yeah. years, so, yeah. Okay. So, so you have a lot of experience. So the saying, I could do this blindfolded, definitely holds true for you. Definitely. <laughs> well, you know, Annette, I tend to think that if you're a good chef, that this kind of stuff, like cutting things up, you, uh -huh. you practice that, you really don't need to see, even if you're totally sighted gets to be kind of automatic I think yeah yeah I got to be careful or there gets to be extra protein in my dinner yeah <laughs> so you're cutting up all the different spices now yeah all of them together and then let's go Did I hear you say that you grow all that stuff in your yard? Right there. That's amazing. It better you have your, your home garden. Everything is organic. Yes. Nice. Yes, I grew up on a farm. I know it tastes. Yeah, Now I going to all my season in there. Yeah. Okay, so you got the seasoning and the burger in the bowl, or is that just the seasoning in that bowl? Right there. So I'm going to put my breadcrumb. How much breadcrumb do you use, Melvin? How much? About a cup? Looks like. So I have to um, put a good portion. Huh? And yeah. while when I, um, then I have to give it a heat up. So if, if it stay together, it's mm -hmm. a good portion. So it, I don't have to put any more. So okay, you so it's not. Uh, it's not the quantity, it's the way the uh, product feels. It's the texture. Of yeah, so you have to go little by little, not a lot one time, because you have to add, have to add the egg uh, egg in there so to, to, hold it, to hold it together. I have my um, black pepper, salt in there. It's kind of like a meatloaf. Pardon me? You can also make this as a meatloaf? 
says this again. I'm sorry, I may, maybe you don't eat, eat meatloaf in St. Lucia, but it reminds us of an American dish of a meatloaf where you use uh -huh. the hamburger meat, the breadcrumbs and the seasonings, and then you form it into a loaf and you oh. put it in the oven and then you slice it up. So you don't necessarily have to use bread with it for those out there who don't want to eat bread. Okay, all right. So still just, the same, just... Yeah, it's still the same flavor. It's just a different shape. Okay, so um, let's get the right, egg. What are you looking for now? Okay, I got it. The egg. The I egg. Put the egg there, and uh, I'm gonna mix it now. This will bind it all together. Yeah. Do you have chickens? <laughs> Do you no, have chickens? No, we, we, buy, we, buy, we buy this. You buy the eggs? Okay. Yeah, we buy the eggs, so. Well, I thought you had a garden. You could have chickens, too. You never know. <laughs> I me? said you have a garden. You could have chickens, too. You never know. No, but if you, if you, have, if you have the chickens around there, what happened? Um, you know, they're troublesome, and they, you know, they mash up everything. Aw. They tear it away, you know? They... They're bad chickens. Bad. Yeah, that's the that's the um the one we have there. It's not the the boilers and the layers, not these things. So we have the, our local fowls in there, Saint Lucia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and chicken smell. Pardon you me? wouldn't want them around in that. <laughs> I say chickens also smell bad. We had a lot of them on our farm when I grew up. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, very bad. Yeah, I don't smell good at all. Neither so, do eggs, so I okay. can. Okay, all right, so. <laughs> I'm going to. Shape it out to put it in the oven, so. So you already preheated your oven, Melvin? Well, come did on you, again. Did you, re, did you already preheat your oven? Yes, the, heat, the oven is already heat up. Okay, so, to what? 350? Yeah. Okay, great. 350, yeah. okay. So, when I want to put that in there. I wait for it when it cooks. So, I put the, the burger bread. I put some mayo. I heat up the bread also. I put some mayo. And I cut my um, lettuce. My, um, Tomato and the red the red onion. I put a slice in there, and then after I put the cheese over, and that's ready to go. Wait a second! I didn't hear anything about lemon juice. Oh, lemon juice is getting get there also. When? So, yeah. So I'll I'll give you when I done with this one. So the lemon juice. I'll give you the lemon juice. I thought I heard a rooster crow. <laughs> I thought I did too, but I, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm talking, talking about chickens. <laughs> if, 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 you, so, if you live in St. Lucia, you can't miss the roosters. They're all over the place. Oh, so. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, okay, so ready for the oven? Going to put that in the oven. The, um, going to put the, what I mix up, the burger, the, um, Beef, all the season, all what I chop, mm -hmm. going in the oven right now. Okay. All right. So it's one big burger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, one big, large, flat kind of patty thing. Okay. So um, <laughs> next, get out. So, I have to give the bread a, a warm up, heat up, up out in the oven also. Okay. 
Right, you cut up the bread, the burger bread. Huh. That bread is in a round loaf. That's interesting. Yeah, it is a yeah, it is a round loaf. Okay. And put it on the side of the tree. That's it. That's okay. You're doing a great job, Melvin. I know it's not easy. And you, have you been on television before or on a meeting on the computer before? Or is this your first time? Because you seem very confident. It is, it is my first time. Oh, OK. It's, yeah. a, it's a little tricky. It's a little tricky. But you're doing great. We're doing great. And we appreciate it. OK, all right. Thank you very much. Sure. OK. So we're going to wait. Are you going to plate this? So now the bread's warm. And you got to wait for the burger. Do you have one already made? Oh, so yes. Can, so you could show us what you're going to yes. put on top? Okay. Okay. Oh my goodness. Oh boy. Hello? Hello there. Yes. Oh, that looks beautiful. I can see a little bit. It's very tall and very hearty. Yeah. Very hearty. So what is on top of that now? You got lemon juice, you got mayo. What else? Wait, um, at the top there, mm -hmm. I pass some mayo. I give that bread a, 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 a heat up. Then I put the mayo and there's some cheese. Mm. And then I put the, the other piece of burger, the bread mm -hmm. on there. Yeah. So you're ready to eat now. Does that mean uh, you're going to say goodbye and you're going to go just, eat and leave us? Just just one question, uh, move, uh, Melvin. <laughs> no, no, because um, this is the one that's ready. So the, I have the other one in the oven waiting. So when it cook. That looks great. I'm not sure my yeah. mouth is big enough. For that one. Uh, the, uh, Melvin, thank you. Thank the, you very the, much. The yeah. lemon, the lemon juice is to drink, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so the the burger will be served with a drink of lemon juice. That's mm. correct. Uh huh. Oh. Um, the, it is the lemon juice is not part of the burger. Okay. Thank you, Anthony, for clarifying that. Yeah. It was a missing ingredient. So you're drinking like a lemonade maybe, or do you, right. do you sweeten it? Something like that, yes. Okay, very good. So does anybody else have questions for Melvin? Or it's pretty self-explanatory, self but if anybody had any questions, now would be the time to wave. Raised hands. Don't wave. have any raised hands at the moment. Okay, Melvin, do you, oh. Melvin raised his hand. <laughs> Melvin, what do you want to ask? Pardon me? Did you want to ask something or add anything to this presentation? So happy. Thank you. I, I appreciate y'all coming to show me, show, for me to show what can I, my talent out there. So the world will see my talent. Mm -hmm. What can I do? So I appreciate it a lot. Thank you, Melvin. And you are you have a very couple of raised hands now. Yeah. Melvin, okay. we appreciate you too. Thank you. And, and, and I, and I, and I, and I raise hands. You have a couple of raised hands now. Okay, good. I, I hope um, your day, our day will meet in person in St. Lucia. Yes. Anytime you feel to come to St. Lucia, you'll be free. Oh, thank you. That's okay. quite and, generous. And, and I, will walk, I will walk you in Library Village. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like a great invitation. <laughs> I, 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 I will be your tour guide. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I'll Alan, be your tour guide. Your game? Alan, you That's, game? I'd love to. I tell you, I, I've, I've heard about St. Lucia and the, and the scuba diving down there. I'd love to go there one day. 
Oh, so oh, you never you never heard the San Lucia? No, I I haven't. No, I've I haven't been, either. But I've never oh, been there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a friend. I have a friend of mine. They call Alan. Yes. A good friend of mine. They call Alan. Yeah. Yeah. Good name. Great name. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I've had it for a long time. Kind of get used to. It. <laughs> Do we have a couple of raised hands on it? Yeah, and, and he's a very kind guy. <laughs> Okay, the, the, the audience, yes, uh, Melvin, the audience want to ask questions. Uh, yes. So uh -huh, let us let them do question. that. Waiting for the question. Right, All uh, right. Julia, Julia, you can go ahead. Okay, hi, I'm just showing you the after product because you didn't have time suit. The one that has already been baked. It's right here. And you also, I already put a slice on a dish right here. So then, then have a look at it. And first of all, I want to thank you very much for affording me that time to present my dish. Do you have, have you seen it? That looks delicious. Yeah. yeah because when I was talking, I have not completed it yet, but then you had time to go over to Melvin. So now I just have to show you the after product. I have sliced out a piece and put it on a dish here. So one of my ladies can have a taste. That looks wonderful. I like that you put it on a white dish. It presents very well. Yes. I want to place a pop by it also. As I tell you, you can have it with a little salad or you can have it also a glass of coconut water or maybe one of our local fruit juices. We have mm. lots of local fruit juices. We have the golden apple, the pineapple, the orange, the tamarind with this guava there are all sorts of local mm. just with them. <laughs> excellent thank you thank uh, you other questions from our audience we have nora hi nora what is yeah. your question nora yeah, hi hi nora okay my point okay my question is uh for the my last question uh how many years have he worked at the restaurant? How many years have you worked in a restaurant? How many years have you worked in a restaurant? <sighs> yeah. I'm in a restaurant. Melvin? Um, Hello? Hey, yes, Melvin. Melvin. I'm listening to you now. Yes, Melvin, the, Nora wants to know how many years you worked in the restaurant. You said it was in your 20s, but how, how long were you there? Oh, I, I stayed there for five years. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh. Five years. Oh, yeah. that's great. And, and you know what? When, I start, I, 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 when I start working at the restaurant, I start as the steward. As a steward, like a waiter. Yeah. Okay. You know, I always be by the chef and ask chef the chef question, and you know, <laughs> that's how you learn. So yeah, and mm -hmm. and and there is different things I can do also. All right, Great. Uh, thank we you. We have other questions thank for Mel. You. You're welcome. We do not have any raised hands at the moment. Okay, well, well. I just want to thank Melvin again. I'm gonna turn it over yeah. to Alan for our next segment. Yes, uh -huh. thank you so much, Melvin, for showing okay. us how to take the cheeseburger to the next level. And okay, now, thank you. Yeah. And now, <laughs> let's meet Anthony Avril, the executive. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. Anthony Avril, the executive director of the St. Lucia's well, uh, Blind Welfare Association. Annette? Yes. Okay. Well, Anthony. Last but not least, we, we would like to know a little bit about yourself, your um, eye condition, your journey with your eye vision, and also what you do there at the Welfare Association of St. Louis, uh, St. Lucia, excuse me. Well, thank you, Annette. Thank you so much. Well, to begin with, I'm a man. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. I could tell that. And, uh, but... Uh, my journey has been rather uh, interesting. I, uh, I have lived with blindness be uh, from about a year and six months old. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, and um, I um, 
start, had my first experience in a formal education setting when I was about 18 years old, because um, in those days, they just did not know what to do with a blind child in the regular school system. And um, so it has been quite an uphill um, battle, mm -hmm. but that um, as the, the great St. Paul says that, um, I, you know, I, I, I stuck with it and, uh, and I have won some races, <laughs> okay. like you know, from the, looking at it from the athlete stand standpoint. Um, in the 70s and had an opportunity to uh, do some stu to study in, in, in Canada at the W. Ross McDonald School and uh, returned to St. Lucia mm -hmm. and uh, um, the, um, to the, the late 70s, I um, got involved with the Caribbean Council for the Blind and uh, went back to Canada and came back to St. Lucia in 1981 and I was given the uh, leadership of the association so I have seen the association grow from one level to, to another. We have had some, some challenges along the way. We've had to fight many battles, but that the uh, St. Lucia Blind Welfare Association is um, uh, quite a dynamic organization, um, um, fighting against the odds, making things happen. We believe that, um, people, everyone deserves a chance in life and must be given an opportunity to, uh, to make use of the talents that he or she has. Right, exactly. Um, Wonderful philosophy. Mm -hmm. So what are the kind of services? And number one, I would ask what the kind of services that you provide and is it a member driven uh, association as well and is it just in St. Lucia or is it other places? Mm. Well let, shall we say that the St. Lucia Blind, Blind Welfare Association is definitely a member driven, it's a membership organization. Um, it was inaugurated in 1972 and it is governed on the, uh, an act of parliament so that uh, it has a strong um, legal mandate but it maintain its, uh, its, uh, its, 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 its character as a, a voluntary organization. In the beginning, of course, that um, it was running what was called the School and Workshop for the Blind. But then that in the 80s, it was changed because um, we used to send children to the Santa Cruz School for the Blind in, for blind children in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. In the early 80s, we felt that it was much better to educate children within their own environment. So we started the, the education program in St. Lucia. And in the middle 80s, we decided to mainstream the children because mm -hmm. um, it, you educate them in, isol in isolation, but they have to exist in the society. So we thought the earlier they can be exposed mm -hmm. to the wider society, the easier it would be the, for them to own a living. Mm -hmm. And also by them being sharing the same education space with their sighted peers, um, when they meet again at the workplace, it would not be such a, 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 a traumatic experience for them and for their so-called sighted colleagues. Very good. You're so, trying to socialize them. Yes, um, because we have been uh, pursuing an, an, in, in all in, an inclusive, so we want to transform the St. Lucian society into a, a, an inclusive society where it, there is space for everyone mm -hmm. and uh, everyone in, entitled to receive, but everyone also should have the opportunity to contribute mm -hmm. regardless of the, your vision status, your, your physical vision status. Right, so that's, it's all inclusive. How many would you say off the top of your head do you have blind or visually impaired folks in St. Lucia? Or do you want to divide it by children or adults? However, just giving us a, an idea. The St. Lucian population is not that big. It's about uh, 180,000 people. Mm -hmm. 
And um, the, the, um, according to the census estimates, we would have approximately 2,000 living with total physical blindness, mm -hmm. but that uh, to everyone blind, and you estimate that you would have about up to three with various form of low vision. So mm -hmm. when, if you put that together, um, it, it gives you a, 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 a good idea of the size of blindness and vision impairments in Lucia. Mm -hmm. However, um, we have started a, 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 a drive to mm -hmm. register everyone living in the island with an, any form of, of vision impairment. Um, we are doing this because it would, um, we would be in a better position to, uh, to understand um, what kind of intervention they may need. It's not just uh, uh, having their names and, and, and the, where, they, where they live, but also we want to know um, what, ha, what do they have to offer? Mm -hmm. uh, we, 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 they have challenges, yes, but everyone um, also can have, have uh, something to offer mm -hmm. once, once you, are, you are in good health. So that's where we are. We are in the middle of, of this, in the, in the second phase. And um, so this would drive the way forward. And when, when we plan intervention, it would be based, it will be evidence-based and not, <clears throat> not just simply on the, um, uh, uh, perception. <clears throat> and um, now St. Lucia, we work together with the, uh, our colleagues in the Caribbean under the Caribbean Council for the Blind and Visually Impaired. And um, the Caribbean Council for the Blind and Visually Impaired was uh, formed in 1967. And um, collectively together, we have managed to uh, in some way transform the societal this is the society, the Caribbean societies. Um, the fact that you have in many of the Caribbean islands um, where children are sharing the same education space, um, it would give you give an indication that we have managed against the odds to move the, the, the to lift the bar. But we have a long, long way to go <clears throat> still. Um, the services that we offer. Um, of course, include rehabilitation. We started it on a community um, level. We, we call it community-based rehabilitation. And then um, some smart person says, well, are you rehabilitating the community? <clears throat> and uh, we said, well, if you rehabilitate the people, then indeed you are rehabilitating the, commu the community. Sure, one hand washes the other for sure. That's right. Part of the community. That's right. So. Um, we also uh, the, uh, welcome the development of, of, of t technology and, um, and it's, it is helping us to transform the landscape with regard to persons who are living with blindness and vision impairment. So we are into infotech and uh, training our people um, how to uh, maximize the, the, um, the uh, um, the uh, technology that's, that, that's available. Um, of course, we um, are into Braille and, you know, and uh, for those who, who, who need it. Um, we, we are into sports and, uh, and well, you know, cricket. Yes, tell us about, the, yeah, you're into cricket. Yeah. Tell right. us about some of the fun <laughs> things that you do. Yeah. <laughs> Enough serious well, stuff. Yes. Um, Cricket is, 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 is the flag sport for the people in the Caribbean, particularly in the English speaking Caribbean. And, um, and we thought that if we can get blind and vision impaired people into cricket, then it would also demonstrate to the society at large that blindness is not the end of life. Of course, the, the, the cricket had to be tailor, tailor made to accommodate the various levels of impaired vision. So with blind cricket, we have them into three categories. You have what you call B1, and B1 are the physically blind. 
And um, um, I, I prefer to use the term physically blind instead of totally blind because um, um, it's only my eyes that can see. <laughs> you know? Good point. Good point. Good point. And um, so the B2s, they have some vision, like, you know, partial, partially blind. Mm -hmm. And the B3s, they have uh, the most vision, partially sighted. And, um, and so they would be uh, defending the outfield, whereas the, the B2s um, occupy the second line of defense. And the B1s will be cl feeling closest to the batters. Now, I, I know you are, yeah. cricket is not that big in the US, so, uh, but they, they, what, what happens is that with blind cricket, we use um, uh, the, the cricket ball has some devices and it makes noise mm -hmm. so that it allows those with, with, with very little vision to hear when the ball is coming your way. I, I can just show you one. Here. <laughs> Yeah. There you go. yeah. So this good. is a, a blind <clears throat> cricket ball, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> and hey, grab um, some water if you need it. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna help. Yes. Um, we have been talking a lot. It's been so interesting. True. Very interesting. Hey. So <clears throat> they. So with the. Uh, of course, there are rules governing, well, every sport, you have rules. And with blind cricket, you see, definitely have rules. And uh, people are penalized if you violate the rules. Um, and so, but we are, we are, we have uh, the West Indies Cricket Council for the Blind. And um, we, I'm the current president. And we participate in um, World Cricket Tournament. There's a World Cup coming up mm. in, in India in November. India? So, yes. Oh my so goodness. Be, because uh, blind cricket is, is uh, in right through the cricket world now. Mm. The cricket world, you have India, Australia, Pakistan, England, and, and they, well, Ireland and Scotland. And <clears throat> You have South Africa and the West Indies and- Awesome, you know, are you gonna go? Are you going, right? Um, well, we are hoping that we will be able to send a team yeah. because you know, the finance is, 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 is a big issue. Right. And um, oh, you know, and yeah. uh, it's a huge, it's always an issue when it comes to blindness programs and things like that. And uh, it is. So um, while I say so, let me also appeal to the, the people who will be viewing this program. Yes, please do. I was going to ask, I was going to tell you, please tell everybody how they can reach you, how they can help you with the Welfare Association for the Blind, also the cricket, anything you want to tell us right now. Go ahead. That'd be great. Right. The, with regard to the St. Lucia Blind Welfare Association, you, it'd be pretty easy. Um, uh, the slbwa.org, this focus is www.slbwa.org.org on the web. And um, we have a number of telephone numbers. <clears throat> if you have a pen, quickly, this, the area code for St. Lucia is 758 and 451-9063. Uh, and 452-4691. Um, we have cell lines in the office. 285-5361, another one. Um, the same 758, um, 720. 9941. And then of course we are we have the on the web pages as well, the Facebook and you know the, the social pages. Right. So um and we also have uh, the iCare Caribbean um um website too. You can you can meet the, there with the Caribbean Council for the Blind, the West Indies Cricket Council for the Blind and Vision Impaired. We have uh, our web uh, thing is down. We have we certainly um, we'll be having it back up very, very, very soon. And uh, so it's pretty easy to get hold of us. And then and if anyone would wish to be associated with our programs, um, we certainly we will welcome um, discussing the, the, the manner in which that you can do so with you. Um, nothing is too small and nothing is too big. 
as right. long as it, it it comes as as long as it is legitimate. Um, the we uh, welcome and we need the support um, to sustain the, the 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 programs. We we do not believe that you you have to box blind people. You know, in the in the past. Um, when they discovered that you, um, blind people, be, they can use their hands to do crafts. And so the, it, everybody was being pushed into crafts um, or being pushed into this, being pushed into that. We believe that people need to be given opportunities to make decision what is best fit for them. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we believe in creating opportunities. That mm -hmm. is why, of course, in this, the local mission, we are in. We are there to pro, to um, provide the to meet the general needs of persons who are blind and vision impaired. To uh, provide education opportunities, to provide employment opportunities, to provide you know you name it. But mm -hmm. um, we like the mission of the Caribbean Council for the Blind, which is simply says, well, look, um, preventing blindness and vision impairment while restoring sight and creating opportunities for persons whose sight cannot be restored. My goodness, that's a beautiful, beautiful statement. And you're, you're a very fine, educated, articulate man to present all this. I, I think the associations in good hands, both of them, the St. Lucia Blind Welfare Association and the Crickets and the American Council for the Blind. So the Caribbean Council wanna, for the Blind. Yes, uh, the, the, the ACB would, wouldn't, wouldn't forgive you if you said <laughs> <laughs> Right, it. yes. Okay, um, but then I really want to pick up big up is the ACB and I think it's a wonderful idea um, to have come up with this initiative. And, um, you know, and I like the theme and uh, uh, so that, that, and it shows that the blindness movement, when it comes to the um, people uh, are li living with blindness and vision impairment across the world, there is a strong bond between us, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and people, sometimes we, we missed it. We do not talk enough about it, but there is. Yes. Um, and, uh, and we would like to, to sustain it, to maintain it. Um, it doesn't really matter. I know for us in St. Lucia, anyone that reach our shores, and if you have a vision problem, you contact the St. Lucia Blind Welfare Association, you are treated as if you are a citizen of St. Lucia. <clears throat> I have traveled a bit and I can say similarly, um, you know, so it, this is good. Um, bravo to the blindness movement of the world. Wow. Um, you know, for us, our, our, our slogan logo, logo here is an organization with vision, mm. an organization with vision. <clears throat> Very good. Play on, it's a double play on words for sure. Yes. You That's see, because a, we are not promoting blindness. Mm -hmm. We are promoting people who are living with blindness mm -hmm. because blindness is our enemy. We were given our, independence. Yes, we were given our eyesight to serve us for the rest of our lives. So things happen, mm -hmm. and but we are determined to survive. We are determined to live a productive life in spite of blindness or vision impairment. Very well put, Alan. Do you want to take over now and see if there's any questions? I have to, um, yeah. unfortunately, yes. sign yes. off. But yes, uh, go ahead will. and see if there's any questions. Uh, Thank you, sir. Thank, thank, thank you, you so much, so much Anthony. You, you're a spectacular person. Now, I'd like to know if there are any questions from our audience, uh, from any of us, or any of us from the Cooking Without Looking show. Uh, have any hands raised at this point? I, let's see. Linda. We are not, don't have any at the current moment. Okay, well, I would, I, I just like to say thank you to all of the people uh, on our show today. Those sounded like some absolutely wonderful recipes. Um, thank you to today's guest from the St. Lucius Blind Welfare Association. Also, many thanks to the American Council for the Blind for having us in the community events. We greatly appreciate it. 
Uh, their website is acb.org. Or if you want to reach out to the Cooking Without Looking TV show, please go to our website at www.cookingwithoutlookingtv.wordpress.com. Today's recipes are also posted there. Um, and uh, if you could go to our Cooking Without Looking YouTube channel to view this show or other prior shows. Also, check out our Cooking Without Looking TV podcast anywhere that you get your favorite podcasts. Um, or just say Alexa, Cooking Without Looking podcast. I didn't know we could do that. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Can I throw in a little bit of a commercial? For those of us who were watching last time, I retired my old guide dog, my last guide dog, and I have my new girl with me here today who has been occupying my time. Belle, say hello. Hello, Belle. She's from Leader Dogs, and she's absolutely spectacular, and thank you all. Uh, do we have any other questions or any comments from anybody in our audience? Well, <clears throat> well the, the thinking of the question, I just want to really say to my team, the St. Lucian team, that we are very proud of you guys. Um, <clears throat> Melvin, you did very, very well. He's, Melvin is a brave guy, and, uh, and he <laughs> will, he, you know, he, he, has, he, he will continue to grow. And also thanks to Julia and this, the, the, oh. their support circles. And to you guys, um, and Ernest and Alan and uh, the, uh, the, the, the whole team, Rene, um, you, uh, you, you were superb. We really appreciate um, the time we spent Thank with you. Thank you so much, Anthony. Thank you very much. And thank you, all of us, all of you, for joining us today. And okay. Like and thank you say, so much. Thank you. Say and bye you. for now. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you very all. much. Very, very bye. yeah. <laughs> Special thank you to you. Thank you.